If you live here, fun is your thing. If you live here, tough is your thing. Smart is your thing. Caring is your thing. If you live in Massachusetts, community is your thing. Since 1972, the Massachusetts State Lottery has provided over $25 billion to help cities and towns with the things they need most. If you live here, giving is your thing. My family earns respect. My family clears bases. My family breaks records. My family wins MVPs. My family gives everything. My family makes history. My family wins championships. There's no family. There's no family. There's no family. There's no family. Like my family. Join the fam. Join the fam. Join the fam. When Alaska Airlines needed a partner for the complex operations of travel, they made the switch to T-Mobile. Our 5G has Alaska Airlines and their customers covered from major hubs to remote destinations with 5G coverage ready now for the demands of today and the future. T-Mobile's network powers Alaska Airlines as they deliver next-level care for all customers. 5G ready now. That's how unconventional thinking is better for business. Coke Zero is now Coke Zero Sugar, with great Coke taste. Some people were excited to hear the news, some were skeptical. So we're not going to have the star of the show you're watching come out and say, you'll love it. No special jingle written by this week's hottest pop star. No famous internet celebs who happen to be holding the label just so. Okay, maybe just one little poor shot. The only thing that will make you believe Coke Zero Sugar has great Coke taste is trying it yourself. Ice cold Coke Zero Sugar. Try one today. For the third time this summer, the Wareham Gateman square off against the Hyannis Harbor Hawks on a gorgeous Sunday night in the Middle Cape. And with that, we welcome you inside and upstairs to Tim Elstrom broadcast booth alongside Michael Kirsting, Mickey Doolittle. I'm Jacob Irons. Bria Lasik, the fourth member of our team, will join us in a few moments. Guys, the winner of tonight's game is going to hold sole possession of second place in the Western Division. This game has a little bit more to it. Yeah, especially because Wareham is one point above Hyannis in the standings coming into today, and there aren't that many games in the season as there are in the other in the other leagues. So every game, just as in the rest of the leagues, really does count. And even though it is a little earlier on in the season, we're not at the halfway point yet, it's really going to matter here because of how close the standings really are. Yeah, and positioning yourself for a deep playoff run is key, especially this yep. early in the season. If you can get yourself to those top three or two spots in the division, it's going to be huge going forward. Yeah, the only teams that miss the playoffs here on Cape Cod are the bottom teams in each division. So you want to be in that top four, and then you can let her settle out. But really, you want to be in that top two to try and get those matchups that you would prefer. Yeah, I mean, it's not about necessarily winning in the regular season. It's just about not losing, not being in that last place spot. Right now, Hyannis and Wareham are very well positioned. It's just winning here today for either side will position them even stronger, especially to be going after top seed Katuit. In, in addition to that, having home field advantage during the playoffs is massive. Yeah. If you can get two of your three playoff games, potential playoff games, at home, that's going to be such a big advantage. Big advantage as well as an advantage here today for Hyannis is they are 2-0 and against the Gatemen. And they haven't played them here at McKeon Park. When they've been at Spillane Field, they have done the duty, and they've done it well. Absolutely. And, and part of what they have done so well, actually a major part of what they've done so well, has been something they've done all season long. Bullpen in relief. Two short starts from the starters in those games. Only one run from the bullpen in relief of those short starts. So we've said it all season long that the bullpen is going to be the crux of this team's success. 
and in these two games against Wareham so far, they have been the reason they have succeeded and won. Bria standing by with our coaches. Bria. From McKeon Park, I'm Bria Lossick alongside assistant coach BJ Johnson. And we're back after having our game postponed yesterday. Finally back at McKeon Park. It's plenty sunny and we've got a whole other ball game ready to go against Wareham. We've already faced them two times this season. BJ, what have you seen out of the Gatemen so far? Well, I think they've been very, very competitive. I think they've been excellent. We've had two one-run games with them. I think in both times, didn't we have to come back? on them yeah so we were fortunate they're a good club they're right i think they're tied with us or right behind us i think they're tied with us so they're a good club ethan bates takes the bump today what do you like out of him well i mean his first appearance for us was great um and i think primarily his role has been uh as a reliever but i mean we had him slotted in you know, we've got a lot of movement going on with pitchers, you know, going back, some guys draft guys, some guys, you know, that have uh, had in inning limitations. So uh, he was always slotted to make the start, so I'm glad he can make that start tonight. You yourself sometimes throw BP, known for that, but you've kind of been out of commission lately. What's up with that? I think it has something to do with my age. <laughs> No, I think I'm still okay, but I'm, I'm not up to mid-season form. The problem is I've had to do so much stuff in the spring that I end up not throwing enough in the spring. So I'm like almost still in spring training. Well, according to you, not my words, yours, older age, but younger spirit. What's it like being around all these guys? Oh, it's tremendous. I mean, it's the thing that I look forward to every year and with you too, of course. Um, yeah, I mean, this is uh, a, just a great experience and be able to do it at, um, you know, well past kind of a retirement age is absolutely a thrill. And I'm glad my wife, Mickey, lets me do it. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much. We're going to send it back to our own Mickey in the studio right now. Mickey, Jacob, and Michael, what do you got for us? Your future begins at Dean College. Make a difference. Leave your mark. Break the mold. Be a leader. Achieve unimagined heights. Believe in yourself. Make lifelong friends. This, this is, is your time. time. Your place. Your, your home. Your Dean. It all starts here at Dean College. Welcome you back to McKeon Park. 70 degrees. Sun is shining. It's Sunday night baseball with not a cloud in the foreseeable sky. So happy to have you with us tonight as Wareham and Hyannis meet for the third time. And let's take a look at how Wareham stacks up tonight as they start to enter the box. Thanks, Jacob. We'll, we'll lead it off. They will lead it off with Josh Stevenson, their center fielder in seven games. He is hitting 381 for the Gateman. That is followed by Nick McLean. He is hitting 360 himself, playing right field. The designated hitter, Ryan Campos, hits third. And the first baseman, Tommy Splain, hits fourth and plays first base. Zach Stewart, the left fielder, will bat fifth. And the shortstop, Bobby Bozer, batting sixth, rounding out the bottom third of the order is is Yadi Hernandez, Dorian Gonzalez, and Garen Caulfield playing catcher, third and second, respectively. And taking a look at the defensive alignment, Lipsy, Taylor, Sirota from left to right in the outfield, Smith, Snow, Laurie, and Lane third to first, and Brody Doné does the catching for Ethan Bates today. Lineup like we talk about, that's the beauty sometimes of summer baseball here. They are changing day to day, especially when these two teams last saw each other. Hyannis got the 4-3 win on the 20th of June. Then it goes to the second game of the Cape Cod Baseball League where it was an 11-5 victory for Hyannis. It was a four-run fifth inning and then a five-run eighth inning that really propelled them forward. Yeah, we failed to mention in the open that coming back against Wareham was something they've done really well so far and that this is a team, we've talked about it, they need to find the big hits. It's been inconsistent so far where they've missed it some games, but against Wareham, they've really locked in, taken some really nice at-bats and have found the big hits. Yeah, and when you talk about finding those big hits, that's a team that's been finding it and then someone who's going to have to try and limit Wareham's big hits is going to be Bates. Yeah, Ethan Bates, a out of Louisiana State, he is a two-way player. He'll play defensively, 
all over the place. And offensively, he can hit pretty well as well. He's a third team All-America by Collegiate Baseball. There you see his numbers on the screen. Four and two win-loss record, 3.16 ERA. Pretty good whip, 37 innings pitched, and a pretty good walk to strikeout radio, 46 to 13. Last time out against Falmouth, he went two and two-thirds innings, did not give up a run. And out of Louisiana Tech, the Go Bulldogs, and Hot Springs, Arkansas as well, standing in at five and 10. Does have an appearance, as you can see down there against Falmouth. That's his only appearance of the summer season. So far, two-way guy that comes in to embrace a little bit more of the hurling stature. It'll be Josh Stevenson, the center fielder for the Gateman, to lead things off tonight. And one thing that makes Ethan Bates really an impressive player is that he had a 20 game on base streak this season with a bat in his hand and then he goes out and he shoves from the mound. Yeah. He is a guy that really can do it all. And big reason why he was a third team all American is because you can do it at both sides. Pitch in outside and we're underway right at 6.43. Here in Hyannis. A little bit of a delayed start, but we're finally underway here in a sunny day. That one's able to be poked through and past Smith down the left field line. Hard turn from Stevenson. He'll stay firm at first. Yeah, I mentioned it when we were talking about the lineup set that he's hitting 381 on the season and to go along with those eight hits, three of them are doubles. He's done really well. Ninth hit on the season for Stevenson out of the leadoff spot. Infield comes in to play double play depth. Snow and Laurie, you see the middle infielders, couple of steps in. Pitch away, now one and oh to Nick McLean. All right, fielder comes in batting 360. Has two home runs and eight RBIs already this summer. Finding a strike. Pac-12 honorable mention from Arizona State. That one's pulled into right field. Dropping back will be Sirota on the wall. Feeling for it, trying to reach up. And it's out of here. Wareham starting it early with a two-run shot. Third home run of the year for Nick McLean as he drives that one out to right field. Kind of uses the shorter part of that wall out in right field. It's a little bit shorter as you go towards the foul pole. It's not easy to get it out to right. As down the line, it's 358. Down the left field line, it's only 324. Still nobody away here in the top of the first. Ryan Campos looks at a ball, the designated hitter. Yeah, ball didn't really look like it was carrying too far, but it just kept going and going. Sirota looked like he had it covered out in right field, but he just ran out of room. Chopper, as Lane will scoop it and underhand toss to Bates in time for the first one. And we mentioned that that's the third home run of the year for Nick McLean. He hit one in the last game against Hyannis in that four to three win. Hyannis had back on 21st. The 20th? You were there, you were one day off. 20th? I haven't had as of the 20th, it might be the 21st. I don't know. Either way, a couple of days ago. Pitch low. Now to Tommy Splain, the first baseman. It was the 20th. Try and keep my book somewhat <laughs> in order, but rain delays. And postponements can somewhat get it all over the place. Well, you know who's keeping my book that day. Oh, yes. Producer Grant McNew. Grant McNew is that one. Finds itself for a strike. That one's lined in, stabbing it. And quickly two away will be Lane. It's a good response to come right back from giving up two straight hits to start the game, especially a two-run shot to open the game as well. It's just two bits of weak contact and get yourselves the next two batters out. Good response so far from Bates. Now Zach Stewart, the left fielder. 
Settles in for Wareham. That one's lined and pushed foul. Right into the bullpen over there. Early right action for him. Yeah, be aware if you're on the field. Stewart out of Missouri State was a freshman All-American by Collegiate Baseball. That one's lined to Laurie at second base. He'll pick it up and fire. Wareham scores two in the top of the first. Hawks picking up their bats for the first time tonight. Gannon's Tavern is the home of incredible wings, handcrafted cocktails, ice cold beer, and Kino. Their innovative tavern menu features seafood, great sandwiches, steaks grilled to perfection, and stunning specialty dishes. There's no better place to watch your favorite New England pro football team than Gannon's Tavern in their large bar or outside on their covered deck complete with TV and sound. Gannon's Tavern, 959 Bursa's Way, Hyannis. Like them on Facebook and Instagram. Yes, soon at Gannon's Tavern. With Hood Milk, you can trust your family is getting high-quality milk in every nutritious and delicious drop. It begins here on Farms That Hood Selects. With farmers who uphold the highest standards and who pledge to never use artificial growth hormones. And you'll see that care continue right to your home with our Light Block bottle, which protects the fresh taste of your milk. At Hood, we never stop caring about our milk because you never stop caring about your family. Always good. Always Hood. Welcome back to McKeon Park. Let's take a look at how the Hyannis Harbor Hawks stack up coming into this Sunday night matchup. They're going to lead it off with Cam Smith, a bit of a new leadoff hitter for them from Florida State. He's playing third base and hits first. Mike Sirota, the right fielder from Northeastern, hits second. Billy Amick, the designated hitter from Clemson, hits third. In the cleanup spot, it's Alex Lane, the first baseman from Northeastern. Will Taylor, from Clemson, the center fielder, he's had a hot start to his season. He hits fifth. Brody Donay was one for one with a couple of walks in the last time out for the Harbor Hawks. He's from Virginia Tech and catches today. Trey Lipsy from Ohio State plays left and hits seventh. Eric Snow, the shortstop, had that big triple that drove in a couple of runs against Bourne in the last time out. He's from USF and hits eighth. Brad Keylori, again, in that second cleanup hitter role plays second from Tennessee, he hits ninth. If you can get it over and get to that eight and nine spot, that's a lot of speed right now between Snow and Laurie on the base pass. And not only that, we saw we saw spots of what Snow can do with the bat against Bourne. He scored a two run triple in the last game. It was one of only a few runs in the loss to Bourne, but Snow was able to, to flash some potential. We haven't seen we haven't seen it every game from him, but that's he's able to show what he can do. And if he can bring that to the bottom of the lineup and be able to turn it over to guys like Smith and Amick, it's going to be crucial if he can do it. Cam Smith out of Florida State looking to get the offense rolling and started for the Harbor Hawks. Pitch comes from Manfredi down low. Mark Manfredi getting the nod today for the Gateman out of the University of Dayton in Highland Heights, Ohio. He's behind of the count, 2-0. Has appeared so far in two games. Comes in sporting a 2.25 ERA through eight innings pitched. Has 11 Ks to four walks. Another one upstairs on Smith. Smith in his first time this season as a leadoff hitter. A little bit of a different look shown by the Harbor Hawks tonight. Pitch in for strike. Moving the count to three and one. Talk about it. There's a little bit of shaping and moving here for this lineup right now. It's trying to really find their groove together. Pitch in for or strike again. Man, Freddie fires back to load it full. Yeah, they rank middle in the middle of the league in a lot of the statistical categories. So trying to figure out something going on. Smith launches one back to center field. Dropping back is Stevenson. And that thing's out of here. Cam Smith answers back with a home run of his own. 2-1 Wareham lead. Cam Smith showing off that power that he showed off in Fenway Day. He was hitting nukes over the monster 
couple of weeks ago. We haven't really seen it in a game here for Hyannis, and he just took off right there. Pitch upstairs on Sirota. Let's take another look at that one. It's right down the middle of the plate. Smith is able to work the 3-2 and use it effectively. Yeah, that's why you put guys like him in the leadoff spot. As you you switch the dynamic up a little bit, you might want to get some contact out of him. But hey, you get some power too to lead off the game, no less. Really good work from Smith. 1-1 one, one count to Sirota. Swing and a miss. Now a 1-2 count. We've mentioned how much better Smith has been swinging the bat, seeing the ball as of late. It seemed like that that swing and that home run was coming because he's been able to he's been able to view it a lot better, taking better cuts. He's been getting on base more as well. The smooth the smooth swings have been coming, and now it might be time for a power stroke from him as well. Two two. Sorota swings around and misses. This man Freddie's able to answer back with an out of his own. Yeah, and we'd said that Hyannis was showing a different look from the leadoff spot. A little bit of pop, a little bit more pop from that leadoff spot, and perhaps a little more on-base ability. We, they've been going with the traditional leadoff hitter throughout the year, and Brad Keylory, who has a little more speed. Amick settles into the box to look at a strike. Billy Amick out of Clemson, currently in the transfer portal. Designated hitter role today for the Harbor Hawks. Pitch low below his knees. This is a guy that has made a consistent impact since getting to Cape Cod. Comes in with a 354 batting average. Fifth right now in the league as that one's gonna get blooped and dropped in in center field in front of Stevenson. It's a hit for Billy Amick. And gets one on with one away. Billy Amick, you know, he's been hitting the ball hard. That wasn't really that hard, but it found a little bit of open grass. Goes to show baseball, you know, a little bit of sport of luck, but also finding holes in the defense. You could also say that that's a bit of a switch of approach from Billy Amick, too. He knows he wants to hit the ball hard every time, but just getting bat on ball, being able to dunk it in wherever he can is his top priority. Pitch in below the knees on Lane. Comes into the lineup today as the first baseman. All CAA first team. Check back, he'll get in there safely. One and know the count. It's low now advancing to 2 and 0. So now we've mentioned this about their ability to come back in these games. They come back again and this time they immediately respond. I love how quick this response was and especially because of how well Cam Smith set the table set, making a really good at bat and also ending that at bat with a shot out to left center field. It's part of it's, that's close to the deepest part of the park as well. So that one did need a bit of carry to get up out of there. So a good at bat and a really good result to that at bat as well. Lane fouls it off and out of play. That's something we've talked about is this Hyannis team, we mentioned it the last time they were here, but they do not go out without a fight. They will contest runs that are scored almost immediately as soon as they're crossing the plate. Chopper off to the left side. Bowser will be able to turn one, and do they get two? Yes, indeed they do. It's a double play for the Wareham Gateman, but Cam Smith strikes, cutting their lead in half. We go to the second. That ship on the shoulder, that started at a very, very young age. People's expectations are, they're cool, they're fun, but mine are bigger. Playing New York, they want to see winners. It doesn't matter if it's a Monday or a Friday or a Saturday. You gotta come with it, or those fans will let you know. Pick one thing from me, pick one other thing from another player, make it your own, you turn to who you want to be. What motivates me is the unknown. You know, how good can I be? You get away from the lights, 
get away from the camera. Mientras más presente yo esté en la caja de batería, más éxito tengo. Man, how can you not keep it fun, man? This is a kid's game. If you could go back and tell 10-year-old Francisco one thing, what would it be? Be a bad mother. Hey, Harbor Hawks fans, did you know the Nat Cape Cod is the official light up the park sponsor of the Hyannis Harbor Hawks all season long? Thanks to the Nat, the lights at McKeon Park stay bright all summer as the future stars take the field. Visit the Nat Cape Cod to order online today. What a great restaurant the Nat Cape Cod is offering two locations in Orleans and in Hyannis. A little bit of a Shake Shack atmosphere to it. Oh my God, you know me, resident New Yorker here. <laughs> I love my Shake Shack, so it's a nice taste of home when we head up there. I had a good avocado burger when I went there the other day. We gotta go. I, I, I gotta, didn't go with you, you guys that yet? time. Oh. I, I haven't been, I've walked past it once. Great lunch spot, yeah. great lunch great spot. Great lunch spot. It'll be Bowser, Hernandez, and Gonzalez to settle in for the Gateman to try and respond after Hyannis was able to get one. They still lead two to one though. Swing and a miss on Bowser. Pitch outside on Bozer. Bozer came in as a pinch hitter in the last meeting between these two teams. He did have a hit in that at bat. Good slick fielding, shortstop. Pitch inside. Those were almost thought about it. It's going to be interesting to see how Bates responds here, coming back off a two-run inning in the first inning. Always the toughest inning. I say it all the time to get out of is that top of the first. So it's interesting to see what Bates will do here. Now full count here to Bozer. Comes from the University of South Florida. Comes in with a 171 BA. With the full count delivery, chopper to the left side coming over. Will be Smith on the move in time? Yes, indeed. A great play by Cam Smith to come across the diamond to get there in time. He's oozing confidence after that home run, guys. You don't, we've seen Cam Smith come alive in these last few games, and now he's even showing it in the field, too. That's a play that you may not see him make a few games ago, but now he's seeing the ball better, as we mentioned. He sent that ball over the fence, and yeah, he can rock it out there in the field with a little bit of swag to his game, too. That was a tough short hop that came yeah. in. It, it was going down. Normally, you want to field that one when it's in the air and not closer to the ground or just coming out of a hop, and he fielded that in one of the most difficult places to, to field a baseball, and, and he handled it perfectly. <laughs> So I'm going to miss by Yadi Hernandez. And back to that at bat. It was a good work, good at bat worked by Bozer, but that pitch comes and that play comes as a result of a pitch that Bates needs to make on a full count. He knows he can't walk him, so he leaves the fastball down the middle and challenges the hitter with it. Good work from Bates. Inside almost hitting Hernandez. In the Sun Belt last, last year, excuse me, at Seton Hall last year. He played 36, 34 games. Pitch outside missing, now three and one. He also threw 14 runners out trying to take second. Normally a catcher, but playing first base today. That ranked third in the Big East. Big swing and a miss. T now load the count full. Set a career high and average with 273. That one's popped back into the netting. We'll do it again full. Yeah, we saw his arm on display last time. He was able to throw out runners against against Hyannis. He's showing that in his blood he is he's related to Yadier and Benji and Jose Molina, the three the brothers Molina of the catch of catching trios in the league. That one's line to center field, dropping back. Quickly will be Taylor to make the grab. 
Taylor covered a lot of ground to get that one out in right center field. He got a great jump on it, though. Yeah, and this is, I was just about to say that, Mick, is that we see Will Taylor so confident out there in center field. You're covering so much more ground than you are in the corner outfield because you have to range to either side. It doesn't seem like Will Taylor ever takes a wrong step. His first step is so quick. He reads that ball off the bat so, so well. Dorian Gonzalez looks at a ball. Third baseman for the Gateman. Pitch in four strike. Smith's playing a couple of steps in at the third base position. All one. Now a one and two. Pate settles in, toes the rubber. Go off Gonzalez in the box. Gonzalez out of the University of Miami. Wears number zero at school. Play for the Martha's Vineyard Sharks of the NECBL, which is only a ferry ride away from Hyannis. Batted 257 last summer. Really? Yeah. Martha's Vineyard. One, two, chopper. Down to the right side, caught up in the grass lanes there. Going to try and throw it in time. Bates not going to be able to get his foot on the bag. I'll tell you, that was a great play by Bates to get over to first base, showing off a little bit of speed. And then, watch this. He's going to get over there to the bag quickly. And then the throw is a little bit in the dirt, so he picks it out. So he's doing 80 things at the same time and somehow gives Hyannis a chance at getting the runner. Now it'll bring up Garen Caulfield. I'll back off the plate. And watching that play back, you wonder if maybe, maybe if Brad K. Laurie could, that could be his ball, and maybe instead Lane retreats back to first, and because Lane comes so far off, that gives Gonzalez a better chance to be reaching. That one's pulled into right field. Dropping back will be Sirota on the warning track. Feeling for the wall, makes the grab. It's a one, two, three, four inning. Wareham still leading by one. Hey, mama, what's up? Did you switch my service from Verizon to T-Mobile? Yep. T-Mobile has the only nationwide 5G. Well, Mr. Know-it-all, let's see if you right about that. Mama. Hey, Mama, I'm working. It works at the pie shop. T-Mobile's 5G works inside and out. Hey, what you need, Mama? I'm trying to watch the game with my boys. It works in the park. Oh, OK. <sighs> Mama? It works at the aquarium. In the parking garage. At the beach. In the elevator. It works in the movie theater, too. Oh, shush yourself. I'm talking my baby. You're driving me crazy. I was just calling you to say thank you, baby. I love you. I love you, too, Mama. Yes, Mama. It works in the kitchen. Hey, Mama. Mama? 5G, it works in the club. Who are you in a club with? All about it. Hey, Mama. Well, welcome back to McKeon Park. Wareham leading Hyannis 2-1 to one currently. But let's take you around the league and how the standings look coming in here so far. Let's start with the East, Mickey. Yeah, so the East, YD paces the division right now. They are 8-4-1 and one with 17 points. But right behind them, just a point behind, is Harwich at 8-4. and four. Brewster in third place at 5-6-2. and two. They have 12 points. And Orleans, 5-7, and seven, the team that Hyannis was supposed to play yesterday. But poor field conditions rain that one out. And then Chatham rounding out the pack at 4-7-1 and one with 9 points. Again, yeah, taking a look at the West, Mighty Katuit heads the West as well as heading the league with 18 points, but then right behind them, Wareham, Hyannis, and Bourne at 13, 12, and 11. So this, those three spots 
it's a real toss-up. That's why we were talking about in the open about how important this game is. And then two losses for anybody else and two wins for Falmouth with eight points. They jump straight up too. So this is really anybody's division so far for in, in that fight to get into the playoffs. Yeah, and you haven't had a real chance to separate yourself at this point in the year, Unl unless you're maybe Katuit, who's just gotten off to a red-hot start. But even them, we've seen lose two games in a row now. And now beating Wareham in these earlier two games at Spillane Park just makes it that much more important in the divisional matchup already. Winning those divisional games, especially early in the season, getting yourself off on a good note has been huge for Hyannis so far. Taylor with a 1-0, fouls it away. Well, Taylor out of Clemson in center field today. Already seen a little bit of action for him, making the second out against Hernandez in the second. And there you see the numbers. He was red hot this year and he's brought that into Hyannis. As a bases clearing double in that ninth mm -hmm. inning to push to the 10th inning for Hyannis, nodding it back up at six, the largest comeback in the bottom of the ninth in point streak error as he knuckles that one off and over to Spillane to get the first one. Infield was playing straight up there, but that's a ball that Will Taylor, he's going to say, yeah, well, that looked pretty familiar because that was the kind of knuckle and pop-up that landed fair right behind first to score those tying three runs. But that's what happens when you play your infield at normal depth when the inning starts, and that's what happens when you don't have the bases loaded to start an inning. Now Brody Donay watches a ball that floats high. I, I think that that game is going to come back up in a lot of broadcasts this year. Yeah. It was one of the best games I've personally ever seen. I know the Cape probably has ever seen. Got to give it to our social media team and Max for making a stellar video, really highlighting mm -hmm. that victory. 1-1 one, one misses low. Donay gets a little bit of happy feet. And you can't forget that our own Jacob Irons won. Oh. Call of the week for that. I appreciate it. Cape Thank Cock you, Mickey. Call of the week. Today missing and looking at a pitch off the plate. Very gracious of you, Mickey. Thank you. <laughs> that one pulled into right field. Will it get down and be fair? No, it's foul. Curving inward down the right field line, just barely missing the chalk. Yeah, Donay, that was the kind of contact that you think is just like a little inside-out blooper. But he has so much power that that would have hit the fence if it would have stayed fair. Like, that was just incredible display of power on a, on a, what a contact, a piece of hitting that you'd expect that just would maybe sneak its way over the first baseman. Yeah, a guy like Donay, that's not, that's a, what his version of a defensive swing is, so. Pretty scary when you're, see, when you're talking about defensive swings, trying to just protect the plate a little bit, and that's the kind of contact he can put on it. Fowler back will do it again now for the <laughs> seventh pitch of this at-bat. <laughs> Donay lines one into right field and dropping down in front of McLean. Brody Donay continues to be a hot bat for the Harbor Hawks and finds himself at first. Yeah, he's seen the ball really well recently. Two walks last night, did a great job against Bourne, was, did not pick up a hit in that game, but still had a, sacrifice, had a sacrifice fly that drove in a run, situational hitting. He's just adjusting to this league and is becoming a smarter and smarter player every single day. And if this continues, man, look out. Lipsy shows bunt, pulls back. And now a little interesting here from Stevenson. He's shading over to the left field, leaving a huge gap right now in right center field. Pitch inside, Lipsy has to get out of the way. Hernandez is able to glove it. Yeah, and that's the pole side as well. So Lipsy, a guy that can put it down into the gap but I think they are expecting him to bunt here. He has the speed to beat it out if necessary. They'll check back Donay. So 
Let's see. Last summer, stole 16 bases for the Cal as that one will come in to hit Lipsy for the Kalamazoo Growlers of the Northwoods League. You've got the count going on your end, but I've gotten mine own. That's 22 hit by pitches this year for the Harbor Hawks, by far the lead league. Yeah, next closest with 15, so you still got five away. That's seven now. Yeah, now seven. Sorry, don't do math. <laughs> <laughs> As Eric Snow, the eight hole hitter, settles in. So this is the part of the lineup we talked about, guys. Getting it from the eight and nine hitters, turning it back over to the top of the lineup. We've talked about, I, I, I've talked about on these broadcasts a lot, about them getting on base and doing a lot of the run scoring early in the season. Well, now there's a chance for them with runners on and on, only one man out to do a little bit of the batting in of the runs as well. So big spot early in this game, especially for this, these bottom two and Snow and Lori on deck. Snow had that big two RBI triple yesterday against Bourne. In an offense that started out pretty hot, but has cooled off a little bit since. That's why you've seen a little bit of the retool of the lineup here for Hyannis tonight. Try and figure out that mixing matching for the guys that are going to be here most likely down the stretch. As Snow's able to poke that one off to second base. Caulfield will try and go to two as he'll get Lipsy at second. But now runners on the corners here for Brad K. Lori. That was an aggressive turn by Caulfield to, to get that one to second. Donay was hustling over to third, but they ultimately get the, the out at second. They don't get the lead runner, but they get a big runner at second. Honestly, I was kind of expecting him to throw that to first. I was too, especially the way that his momentum was carrying him. He had to completely shift his hips and turn himself back the way he was going against. So really tough play, and you said it, make aggressive play, but because that gets the out, it's a good play. Now with the bright sun, you're starting to see those shadows start creeping in from the other part, and really right field's only one that's truly illuminated fully. And when you see those shadows creep in between home plate and the pitcher's mound, it becomes so difficult on hitters to be able to see the ball coming in because it enters the light and then enters the shadow. It's just really hard to pick up pitches. A one to Lori popped up and out of play. Looking here to maybe see Snow with his speed try and work a double steal potentially. Runner goes, pitch comes. Lori fouls it off again. And it looked like Spillane was ready to throw down to second, so. At the same time, Donay didn't get a huge lead off of third, so maybe it wasn't quite a double steal. O2. Poked foul again. So now you're in a two-strike count already behind having to protect the plate, but good work from Laurie to be staving off these pitches, and he's going to be making man Freddie throw the pitch that he wants to him. The 0-2 from him, Freddie, he'll check back Snow. He's been set in motion a couple of times. There you see the numbers from Brad Key Laurie from Central Florida. Pretty good if I don't say so myself. Runner in motion, a swing and a miss from Lori. Gets Wareham out of the pressure in Donay at third. We go to the third. Wareham leading by one. We all have obstacles, challenges at different points in life. I still push myself every single day. And the harder I push myself, the, the more I find myself drawn to wearing Ufos. The first time I put on a pair of Ufos, it was like someone released the pressure. It was so crazy when you are recovered and can do more that has a compounding effect on all aspects of your life. Stepping into a pair of UFOs, they're truly one of a kind. There's nothing like them. Best ever? Good question. Wait, why do you sound like Dr. J in your head? I've always sounded like Dr. J in my head. 
Which means Dr. J's outside voice sounds like my inside voice? Which Coke? The doc would know. He got the world to call him doctor without going to med school. There's only one best ever. <laughs> Welcome you back, Ethan Bates, out for another inning of work here in the third. Bates comes in here after allowing a two-run shot to McLean. Back of the first, he's done a good job of retiring the batters. Yeah, and you have to so far. He has done after that tough start. It was two hits to start out straight away, and in his next in his next seven batters, he set down six of them. Only just the, the line out into right field from Dorian Gonzalez is the only one that where a batter was not retired. But now the top of the order comes back up. Those are the two batters that gave you a little bit of trouble. Stevenson led off the game with a single. And as you said, Jacob, the McLean home run is the difference between these two sides right now. So second time through the order, you're going to know a little bit more the hitters are about how to navigate Bates, so this is going to be important to kind of switch it up a little bit. Yeah, and I think Nick McLean's going to be the key here. In coming out of the two hole, he's on deck right now. He, of course, homered back in the first. He homered in the previous matchup, so neutralizing that threat is going to be big. Stevenson had a single back in the first. We'll look at a ball just below the knees. It's one of the hotter games we've had at McKeon Park this year. I think this is the hottest. Yeah, 72 degrees right now. But the biggest thing is a little bit of the humidity yeah. that's come in with this low pressure system. Look at you, meteorologist oh. in your terms. I watch, watch <laughs> the local weather every morning <laughs> when I'm having my breakfast. It's the joy to my day. 1-1. One, one. See, I would have attributed the moisture in the air to the rain that came through. Yeah, that's part of the low pressure system. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. The, the rain came through, and then behind it is the low pressure system. Gotcha. Yeah, so like when you see a rain, it brings a pressure system or a system with it behind it. That might clear it. One, two, swing and a miss. Bates getting his first strikeout on the bump today. Yeah, great breaking ball away. Nothing that he can do with that and was able to fan him. Now the biggest test here for Bates in this top half of the third and Nick McLean. Pitch in for strike. This must have been Long drive for Wareham in the heat. That one's able to be driven into left field and get down in front of Lipsy. McLean keeps his strong night in the box with a single. I think I should keep my mouth shut. I think he heard me <laughs> setting up that joke. Now, even though he, do he does reach base there, all things considered, you can't say that's the worst thing, especially considering he's hit two home runs off of your team. So when you when you think about it and look at it in perspective, not so bad, especially now that a ground ball sets up the double play. So just make the right pitches and you're out of this inning. Campos grounded back to lane over at first base to have bait, Bates come over and cover. Again, just like that first inning, middle infield pulled in a little bit, a couple of steps. Laurie and Snow getting ready to try and turn that double play. And the reason they do that is because it's a shorter run over to the second base back. And it also allows them to react a little bit quicker to ground balls and throw them to the bag a little bit quicker. Now a 3-0 count to Campos. Pitch in the dirt, working a walk now to put runners at second and first. Now Tommy Splain, first baseman 
comes in with two on and only one away. Lined one over to Lane over at first. A little soft line drive back in the first inning. Bates missing low. Now a little bit of motion starting to build in the Harbor Hawks bullpen. That pitch in for strike. Take a look through the binoculars. It's Cade Obermuller mm. starting to get warm. Obermuller started, has come in in appearance last time these two teams meet. It'll be interesting to see how long Bates' leash is right now. Normally a little bit of a shorter outing type pitcher. One, two, liner over to Laureate, second base. He'll have to go to one to get the shore. He gets it, runners on the move to advance a base, Campos to second, McLean to third. Only two away here. Yeah, that was a good play by Lori because he had a look over to second to try and turn a double play, but ultimately made the right throw over to first, get the sure out. And that'll set up second and third with two outs, but before that. Yeah, Eric Lexis will come out to have a, a meeting on the mound with Bates and Donay here. Yeah, what I liked about that last at bat against Splain is how much he worked the inner part of the plate there. We've seen a lot of pitchers work the outer half of the plate, and that's really been where Wareham has attacked so far. Going back to that inner part of the plate is what got him into the two strike count and what's gotten him into soft contact grounding at the second, almost maybe too soft of contact for this situation. So you gotta think that's what Coach Eric's, Eric Lexus is, is probably talking about. Just don't fix it if it ain't broke. It will be of course tougher now that he's got Stewart a lefty to deal with. He is kind of throwing further across his body to try and get those yeah. on the inner part of the corner. So a little bit tougher, but it's always worth a try if it was working on the last bat. When I saw him coming out, I thought it was gonna be a pitching change to set up the lefty on lefty. Pitch low in the dirt. And that's that's interesting that you say that. It's, it is maybe maybe that Obermuller isn't quite ready, so maybe yeah. that was a bit to buy some time. He just started throwing. Yeah, so that would maybe a, to buy a little time here because the lefty v. lefty would have favored Hyannis here. And it's also still early in Bates' outing. And Stewart come in here with a 214 BA. And excuse me, he is a switch hitter. Just look down at my notes for a second. Now pitch away. Two one, swing and a miss from Stewart, the left fielder. Perfect off speed pitch off the plate outside. You really have to be expecting that pitch to do anything with it. And if you swing hard at it, you, you have to be diving over the plate to try and get there. Pitch in and away and a swing and a miss from Z Zach Stewart is able to get Bates out of the jam. However, before we push on, let's send it down to Bria Lasik. For more this evening, Delmar Vacations donates Thanks, guys. $20 now, host parent and player relationships time. can be Sustainable pretty fun, fun, especially if your host dad is Dan Johnson, the Harbor Hawks president. That's right, Cam Smith lives with Dan, and they formed a great relationship so far. Dan was just jostling him before the game, trying to cheer him on, and he goes, You know, Cam, I kind of like you in the leadoff spot today. That's new. Cam just smiles back at him. Then, what does he do? The first at bat, he's in the lead off spot hits his first bomb of the Our season of the all right back to you guys thank you Bria <laughs> as walk to me back you're so right Bria 
those host family relationships are so important and so pivotal about what makes a Cape Cod. We're not able to do it without host families. Yeah, the host families are ultimately where the play, why the players can come out here and why this league can function. They offer up their homes, they welcome players into their lives, and it's truly an amazing system. It builds so much community amongst the team as well. It gets the players closer to the families, to the fans of the team as well. It's just so nice to be seeing this as such a nice running tradition through the years of, of this wonderful history of this league. Yeah, and she touches upon it there. Dan Johnson, the president mm -hmm. of the Hyannis Harbor Hawks, taking in and doing it himself. He's not a guy that preaches and saying, you need to host a, a kid without saying, without doing it himself. He hosts and is ultimately pushing for it. I was about to say, next time you see a, an ad trying to get you to host a player as, for a, from the Harbor Hawks, know that Dan Johnson, the president that's putting those ads out there, is one of the people doing it. As Cam Smith settles into the box, the player that he has created such a deep relationship with. He homered last time he was in the box, looking to do so again as Ooh. that one's popped up a mile into the air, dropping back into right field will be Caulfield as he'll make the grab. Wow, he just missed that one. That was popped into the stratosphere right there. It took a long time to come down and that is a little bit disappointing for Smith, but knowing that he has that power and he showed it off in the first inning. Mike Sirota fouling that one back into the net. Sirota went down swinging to man Freddie back in the first. You know, another great thing about the Cape Cod League is how many of these players are going to play in the big leagues. Like we talk about the countless number of Harbor Hawks that are in the major leagues right now. It's its unbelievable. One of the most notable, Jackie Bradley Jr. Austin Slater. Michael King. 0-2, taken inside for strikes. Sirota goes down looking for the second out here in the bottom half of the third. Brian Wilson. Oh, come on. Oh. Oh. It's on the tip of my tongue too. All right, I'm out. All right. I thought I, I was wondering how long we could go. We've got another Yankee one that I'm just I'm not thinking of. I know there's like a I've I've got I think the Rays back end guys. I think Thompson and Fairbanks were both here. Rich Aurelia had a long major league career. Yeah. That's not a name I've heard in quite some time. Pat Burrell. I'm just naming Golden, all the Giants right now. Golden, <laughs> Spi Golden Spikes winner in college, I believe. I believe yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. yeah. Pitch upstairs. You had Dylan Cruz win the Golden Spikes yeah. award today for LSU. That one misses away. Oh. Aww. All fans are welcomed, even of the fur kind here at McKeon Park. LSU might need a friend like that after today. Pitch in for strike on Amick. What did that game end up? 15 to two? Oh, last well, time they, I they had 20, I think. Woo that one's popped up into foul territory, giving chase will be Spillane, dropping to a knee. They'll say he caught it. Anthony let the see though. The first place umpires over there in time. And so is Johnny Davis to try and argue the call, the first base coach for the Hyannis Harbor Hawks. But we go and push on to the fourth here, where I'm leading. Diet Coke, are you my mom? You should be so lucky, because you know what moms do? Well, I suppose we should start with the whole giving you life thing. It seems like that should be enough. No? Okay. What about her ability to send shockwaves through the neighborhood without saying a word? or whip up a ridiculous handmade costume that you forgot to tell her about. Not to make you happy, but because she had a reputation to uphold. She invented Rideshare, called it Carpool, and did it for free. She didn't need those dating apps either. You copied her jeans, her spin, her shoes, her scrunchie, and whether you realize it or not, her music. Why not? Oh, and she can win any argument in four words. Because I said so. Everything you're trying to do, she's already done it. Did it better. And she did it with a dead Coke in her hand. 
So, drink what your mama gave you. Welcome back to McKeon Park. Gateman leading Harbor Hawks 2-1 on this gorgeous Sunday night on Cape Cod. Along with Michael Kirsting, Mickey Doolittle, I'm Jacob Irons, Briella Lassick, the fourth member of our team. Down there patrolling the dugouts there for us. Thank you so much for joining us, whether you're on YouTube or D1Baseball.com. Bozer, the shortstop, settles in after grounding out to Smith on that athletic play back in the second. How great is that? D1 Baseball in a partnership with the Cape Cod Baseball League show all the games? It's what makes this league so special year in and year out. We've touched on all the stops today. The, the host families, the D1 baseball, Fenway Day. Yeah. The alumni. Yeah, we're, we are sure to be, we're talking up the league today. As every day should be for how good this Cape Cod Baseball League is continuously. That pitch inside. And now we can talk up even another one on top of it. Tomorrow's game for the Harbor Hawks will be ex exclusively on the video television broadcast will be on Nesson, the New England Sports Network. Pitch in for strike. Still a little bit of action in the Harbor Hawks bullpen. Great new partnership for Nesson and the Cape Cod Baseball League getting to show, showcase the talent that comes to this region every year. Bates. Throws believe, away. I believe the All-Star game will be on Nesson yep, as well. That will be on a little bit of a tape delay right. right after the Red Sox game, even better. Just imagine the, the amount of talent in the future major leaguers that are going to be playing in that All-Star game. Swing and a miss from Bozer to get one away. And even better that it's right after a Sox game because you're going from that major league level and then right afterwards you just get to keep the TV on and just see what's next to come mm -hmm. in the future. So it, it's great work from Nesson to be able to to partner with to be able to partner with the league. Pitch upstairs to Hernandez. Also got to thank Pack Network for all they do for the Cape Cod Baseball League to allow these games to get on linear television. Hernandez looks at another strike. Another date to look forward to is the MLB draft. One, one, healthy swing and miss. A couple of current and former Hawks will be hearing their name called on July 9th. It's coming quickly. An exciting time in baseball in all of these players' lives. Pitch low in the dirt. Hiro Yamada in the bullpen today, but when you're in there not slated to go, you gotta make sure you're earning your keep and able to get some 50-50. He's a very convincing individual to not buy a ticket from. They should have the mascot sell one of those some days. One, two, foul off. Ozzy. How do you get how do you get the mascot to sell if Ozzie's they don't speak? Got, Ozzie's got yellow Converse on today. I think that's awesome. Also got to give credit. Does he always have Converse on? I don't, I don't I, I don't think he does. 1 2 below the knees. Now evening the count. Adds loading the count full. Got to give it Credit to our intern coordinator, Leah, for repainting Ozzy's nose. 3-2, fouled off in back and out of play. Making sure everything is spick and span here at McKeon Park for fans' enjoyment. Hernandez looks for the payoff pitch. So he takes inside for a ball. Third 
It's going to be a mountain visit. We'll see if this does it for Bates, and I believe it will. So a pitching change here for the Harbor Hawks. Yeah. Gade Obermuller will start his John from the bullpen to the bump. We'll tell you about him and how his season has been so far on the other side. You're listening and watching Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Your future begins at Dean College. Make a difference. Leave your mark. Break the mold. Be a leader. Achieve unimagined heights. Believe in yourself. Make lifelong friends. This, this is, is your, your time. time. Your place. Your home. Your Dean. It all starts here at Dean College. Retirement strategies come in all shapes and sizes. One strategy does not fit all when it comes to reaching your retirement goals. And considering all your options may be, well, more than you want to think about. So whether you're looking to retire, or already living in retirement, you need a strategy tailor-made for you. Fairway Financial can create a personal retirement strategy just for you, designed to take care of you and your loved ones. Call it. Kate Obermuller comes in. The senior from Iowa looks to try and shut the door here and work out of this top of the fourth. Yeah, it was decent in Iowa City this year. A bit of a higher ERA, but had a good K to walk ratio, as you see. And on the season so far, this will be his third appearance on the year, throwing two and a, two and two third innings, just a hit and a walk, a singular hit and walk to his name. He's hit two batters, but he ought, but he has of the twelve batters he's faced, struck out four. Yeah, and so far on this Cape Cod baseball league season has a 0, 0.0 ERA through two games pitching two and two thirds striking out four only walking one and only allowing one hit most recent action came back on the 22nd of June in the 7-6 victory here at McKeon Park pitching one inning and only walking one in that outing yeah, and he comes from a pretty athletic family. His father, Wes, played baseball at Iowa and then played in the majors for the Kansas City Royals, the Milwaukee Brewers, and the Florida Marlins. That one sounds like a tongue twister nowadays. Miami Marlins, Florida Marlins. Homer Mueller will check back. You remember the orange uniforms they wore? Back when Stanton was there? Yeah. Yeah. And Yelich. They had a super team. They JT did. JT Real Muto, Giancarlo Stanton, Christian Yelich. Nothing and nothing pitch. Popped up into foul territory. Smith's going to give chase. He'll make the grab. Retreating back to first is Hernandez. Now two away. Another tough play. Cam Smith is looking really smooth over at third today. Had to make that basket catch with his glove open and facing down where you normally you gotta put that glove above your head. He lets that fall into the basket to put away to put it away for out number two. Now Caulfield flew out to Sorota back in the second. Pitch. Inside. Yeah, Mick, those those orange jerseys you're talking about with those with their City Connect jerseys making a bit of a comeback as well. City Connects are really, really nice. A 1 0 high chopper up the middle. Over is Snow flipping it to Lori to get the advanced runner. We go to the home half of the fourth, right here on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Cannon's Tavern is the home of incredible wings, handcrafted cocktails, ice cold beer, and kino. Their innovative tavern menu features seafood, great sandwiches, steaks grilled to perfection, and stunning specialty dishes. There's no better place to watch your favorite New England pro football team than Gannon's Tavern in their large bar or outside on their covered deck complete with TV and sound. Gannon's Tavern, 959 Bursa's Way, Hyannis. Like them on Facebook and Instagram. Yes, soon at Gannon's Tavern. With Hood Milk, 
you can trust your family is getting high quality milk in every nutritious and delicious drop. It begins here on Farms That Hood Selects with farmers who uphold the highest standards and who pledge to never use artificial growth hormones. And you'll see that care continue right to your home with our Light Block bottle, which protects the fresh taste of your milk. At Hood, we never stop caring about our milk because you never stop caring about your family. Always good, always Hood. Welcome you back here. The Centerville Pie Company's Pie Eating Contest. Whoa! Hero, what in the world? <laughs> Yamada and Jamie Arnold, two Arbor Hawks going at it as they are having the time of their lives. That's what Summer Bowl is all about, these great experiences that these players get to have as Hero's giving Jamie the death stare right now. Bullpen buddies, Jamie's not having the time of his life right there. Hero downed half of that pie in one in like bite. One bite. It was, yeah. That was crazy. This is, a, this is experience. This is what doing the pie con eating He's contest. He's a returner. He's a second time Multiple pie eating contest. Experience, contestant. and there you go. Two time champion as well. Two time. Hold on, Bria. Lassick yeah. down there. Yeah. Hero, a fan favorite out here. But that man's a pro. He's done it before. He brought the water oh, yeah. too. He's like Joey Chestnut over there. Had to bring the <laughs> bring the water to dunk the pie in. Something to look forward to on July fourth. That, the p hot dog eating contest and the Harbor Hawks playing. Yeah, Harbor Hawks will be home against YD on July 4th. So if you're up here on Cape Cod during 4th of July, I hope you join us here at a very special game as Lane settles in to swing and miss for a man, Freddie, who comes back out for another inning of work. Hyannis and YD play each other three times this year. First one is on the 4th of July on at, in Hyannis at McKeon Park. And then the second one is at YD the day after that. And then the third one is at Dunkin' Donuts Park. Lane goes down swinging for the first down. Very special series. I don't think they play a normal game all year. I think all of those games are going to be extremely well attended. Now Will Taylor will settle into the box. We'll hear a bit more from Bria Lasik in the sixth inning about his dual sport athleticism and what it takes to do it as he looks at a ball down low. He's, he's, he's been putting it on display ever since he's gotten here. Talk about, we saw the play earlier in the game. We see it almost every game that he's is just athleticism to range to either side of his body to make those running catches out in center field. And he's doing it at the plate too. It's really shown out as of course we're gonna talk about again and for not nearly the last time about his about his game tying hit against Pituit. 2-0 from Taylor. Gonzalez is able to glove it, fire across the diamond in time to beat out the speedy Taylor. Two away. Yeah, he hit it hard. It was just into the dirt. That was a tough play. Good play to glove it by Gonzalez on a scorching ground ball. Yeah, and it was a hard hit ball, and even though he probably knows that play's gonna get made, he's hustling down the line the entire time, and that's what you like seeing if you're a manager. And here's a guy that you probably don't wanna see right now if you're wearing him. Done has been really, really good. Chopper back off to the left side, Gonzalez in, and off balance makes the throw for a consecutive 5-3 put out. We go to the fifth. Wareham leading Hyannis. That ship on the shoulder, that start at a very, very young age. People's expectations are they're cool, they're fun, but mine are bigger. You know, when you play in New York, they want to see winners. It doesn't matter if it's a Monday or a Friday or a Saturday. You've got to come with it, or those fans will let you know. Pick one thing from me, pick one other thing from another player, make it your own, you turn to who you want to be. What motivates me is the unknown. You know, how good can I be? You get away from the lights, you get away from the camera. My exit to them. 
Man, how can you not keep it fun, man? This is a kid's game. If you could go back and tell 10-year-old Francisco one thing, what would it be? You a bad mother. Cade Obermuller back out for another inning of relief as the Gatemen lead two to one here. All the offense came back in the first. It was a two run shot from Nick Mc McLean. And then in the first batter of the game for Hyannis, it was a Cam Smith homer. That's how we get here so far. Continuing yeah. to come out. Offensives came out early. Pitchers have settled in the rest of the way. I was about to say, pitchers outside of that first inning have been really, really good. Yeah, as Brody Donate comes out, he's got one of the hottest arms in the league right now. Let's, let's look at that. Top 10 peak catcher exit velocity. So that's the speed of the ball coming out of his hand to throw down with Brody Donate in his guns. He's got him at 90.32. That's a hell of a velocity. Yeah, so high that it's got the... He's got the next guy by five miles an hour, and even more so, more, so much more impressive. That puts him in the top 10 among major league catchers, not just showing it here on the cage. You can stack him up against professional numbers, and we see it every time on the throwdowns, whether it be to start the inning or we see it live to get the to get a runner out. I mean, it's just such an, such an impressive cannon of an arm for a guy who's just only so young and has so much more to, to progress. Pitch in on a strike. Doné is one of the. If you're if you're looking at Doné, as a major league scout, he has to be one of the highest upside guys in the league. Bunt shown from Stevenson. That one's popped it foul over by the back kids. A six five catcher that, you know, doesn't move like a 6'5 catcher. He moves like an average size catcher. He is extremely athletic. He has a cannon from behind the plate, and he can hit the ball a mile. Yeah, we've, we've seen that maybe it isn't reflected in the average, but Brody Doné has been hitting the ball really, really hard. And that yeah. means there's so much more upside that all that it has to do is just, is just fall. That's all that's missing. The contact is great. So there, that's just what's next is just getting – a bit more lucky with it, and and then the rest of the results will come. One, two, swing and a miss, as Stevenson will jog down, but it's a K via Doné in lane. You get the first retired. Yeah, and then you bring up McLean, the dangerous hitter, two for two today, and he had a home run in the last game, as we've said earlier, with nobody on. And that's the key. You want to bring up the best hitters on the opposing team with nobody on. Don't let them do a ton of damage. Pitch upstairs, 1-0. and oh. Full production team up here today with Jimmy Shriver, Grant McNew, Nico Sharp behind the scenes. Two and out to Nick McLean. So far has reached base via the hit in both of his past two at bats. Homer and a single. He looks at a strike. McLean from the top of Arizona State's lineup hit 298. He takes strike two. Five doubles, eight home runs, and 24 runs batted in. He also had five outfield assists from right field. Two-two. Popped into the netting. We'll do it again. Very weird sky after yeah. there wasn't a cloud to start the day. A little bit of a pink haze has started to come over the ballpark. 2-2 two, two missing. Hi, it is very weird. It, it's it's that haze paired with the sunset. It almost It's almost like fire smoke. Yeah, it is a very weird haze. And now the sun has almost like gone behind a hazy cloud. 
It's a swing and a miss from McLean. Obermuller gets the first two outs of the top of the fifth via the strikeout. The lighting is so beautiful in here right now. It's like an orangish kind of tint to everything. It's got a Harbor Hawks color yeah. up in the sky today. It's Ryan Campos, the native hitter, also from Arizona State. First team all pack 12. And this is a crazy stat right here. He has reached base through his entire career with Arizona State, 76 of 84 career games. An on base machine. And shocking, he walked in the third. Finding a way to get on any way possible. All one jump back into the netting and foul. I think it's fog. It's rolling in like fog along the trees in the backdrop of the, the ballpark right now. And that tower out into our view, that cell phone tower out there is definitely being obstructed, so it's definitely some kind of low cloud slash fog, and now we can even start seeing the beams of light from, from whatever is flying over us, which probably is fog. As that one misses off the plate. Poignantly located right next to Hyannis Harbor, so get that seaward fog coming in. Here tonight. Hope it doesn't get too thick because Cape Cod League games have been fogged out before. It's a strikeout looking from Ryan Campos. It's three strikeouts straight for Obermuller. We go to the bottom of the fifth. That ship on the shoulder, that started at a very, very young age. People's expectations are they're cool, they're fun but mine are bigger. You know, when you play in New York, they want to see winners. It doesn't matter if it's a Monday or a Friday or a Saturday. You got to come with it or those fans will let you know. Pick one thing from me, pick one other thing from another player, make it your own, you turn to who you want to be. What motivates me is the unknown. You know, how good can I be? You get away from the lights, you get away from the camera. Man, how can you not keep it fun, man? This is a kid's game. If you could go back and tell 10-year-old Francisco one thing, what would it be? You a bad mother. Well, welcome back to McKeon Park, where the lights shine bright all season long, thanks to the Nat Cape Cod. Offering two convenient locations on Cape Cod, the Knack is the perfect spot for a burger, taco, or even a milkshake. Visit thenackcapecod.com to order online today. The Knack Cape Cod is the official light up the park sponsor of the Hyannis Harbor Hawks. With that fog starting to roll in, it's they're doing a little bit of double duty up there. As Trey Lipsy comes to the box after a stellar top of the fifth, for Kate Obermuller, three straight strikeouts. Yeah, Obermuller was fantastic, mixing his pitches in that inning. As we were all kind of watching the fog and the weird weather coming in and everything, he was just striking people out. Yeah, and and we talk about it so much, and I'm going to say it again, that this is that this is the pitching giving the offense a chance. So in the top of the innings. As Lipsy is able to line that one foul, but into the glove of Spillane. That's not the start you want, but the pitchers are now giving their offense a chance to go at this game, keeping it within one run. So now with the bottom of the order, the bottom two in the order coming up, just as important, they need, they, the, this offense needs to start turning it on because as the game goes, you lose more and more time. So this is the chance to do it. Get this lineup back up to the top. No fouls it back.
No out of the University of Florida. Missing out into the other batter's box. Corners are back against Snow, even early in the count, so not accounting him to lay down a bunt. Snow swings and misses to put two away here in the bottom of the fifth. You might be able to hear that cowbell that's rang every single time a Harbor Hawk is set down. There are so many better noisemakers <laughs> than a cowbell. <laughs> Pitch inside the Bracky Lori. You have so many options. What? I don't know. I ran cross country in high school. I always felt like as Lori swings you and misses. You can't tell me you were out on the trails fighting for your life and you hear that annoying sound. I like think, it. Yeah, this is the one. Really? I think it's good. What about you? I, I just prefer it just to sound like this. I like I like no noise at all, honestly. But if okay, I don't know about that. In, in for a strike, I don't like that as a strikeout celebration noise. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. What do they do? One, two here. I don't know. Cowbell. What do they do at at, at most games? They do something. Each stadium has their signature. Inside, two and two. Let's see. Yankee Stadium does the. The PC Richard. Yep, yeah, PC Richard. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Fenway does the Ric Flair woo, I think. Mm -hmm. That one's lost into center field. Dropping back will be Stevenson at the wall. He'll be able to make the grab on the run. Fog playing a factor there. And he came off the top of the wall, came clean when Stevenson barreled into it. But nonetheless, we're going to the six here on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Hey, Mama, what's up? Did you switch my service from Verizon to T-Mobile? Yep. T-Mobile has the only nationwide 5G. Well, Mr. Know-It-All, let's see if you right about that. Mama. Ma hey, Mama, I'm working. It works at the pie shop. T-Mobile's 5G works inside and out. Hey, what you need, Mama? I'm trying to watch the game with my boys. It works in the park. Oh, okay. <sighs> Mama? It works at the aquarium. In the parking garage. At the beach. In the elevator. It works in the movie theater, too. Oh, shush yourself. I'm talking my baby. You're driving me crazy. I was just calling you to say thank you, baby. I love you. I love you, too, Mama. Yes, Mama. It works in the kitchen. Tell yeah, Mama. Mama? 5G, it works in the club. Who are you in the club with? Cape Cod Healthcare is proud to be the official healthcare sponsor of the Cape Cod Baseball League. When you need to be seen quickly for a minor illness or injury, Cape Cod Healthcare Urgent Care offers a convenient and coast effective treatment option with six locations across Cape Cod from Falmouth to Orleans, open daily with no appointment needed and staffed by board certified ER providers. View wait times at capecodhealth.org. Cape Cod Healthcare, urgent care, minor emergencies, major attention. As Fog continuing still to come in. This is not good if you're the Harbor Hawks. No, not good at all. If this game gets call, called due to the Fog, it, it's going to be a win for Wareham because we have now completed five innings. Now Jeffrey Merzell and Robert McHugh, the third and home plate umpire respectively, will come in as the top of the fencing was able to get placed Back on, it appears, it's hard to see out in center field. I have to pull out the binoculars, but I don't know if they're really helping either with them out. Uh, that one's just. And because the fog has rolled in, that makes the play that Stevenson made to, to end that last inning that much more impressive because he had to range back about 100 feet and make an over the shoulder catch. It was incredible, and he was also fighting the fog as he did it. But this is getting worse and worse by the minute. Ball off the plate. <laughs> yeah, you can even see it on our cameras as 
right here on your screens that it's just a lot tougher to be able to navigate and to be able to see. Splain watches the ball zip right by his belt. Now two and one. Splain last time up. Grounded over to Lori. It's, it's possible to have five delays. You've seen it at Veterans Field over with Chatham. That one's directly located. As Obermuller deals. Inside. Now, a full count here. The Splain. Chopped off foul, and that one got right by the opening between the dugout and the netting as that one went directly underneath the grandstands here. Tommy Splain. Settles back in. Fouled off another quality AB we've seen. That is something that has run rampant throughout the Cape Cod Baseball League has been quality at bats and working counts and working pitchers. If you want to be talking about the positives though, there have only been three hits in this game for Wareham. Both of all three of them coming from the first two hitters in the order today. So though good at bats are being worked, it is primarily the Harbor Hawks hitters that are winning out in these battles because Outside of Stevenson and McLean, outside of those first two hits, there's only to start off the game. There's only been one more hit and two and two more base runs. Albert Mueller payoff is outside and wide. Now Zach Stewart comes to the box. Stewart swings and misses. So it looks like James Hep throwing in the Wareham bullpen right now is the throw over. Now, Obermuller trying to check over. Splain gets back there in time. Still nobody away here in the top of the six. Donay pops up quickly. Retreating is Splain. They want to keep him tight to first. O2. Foul back into the brick wall. Just got a piece of it. I think came all the way back into play. Donay has to come jogging out to clear it. As Jacob Irons would say, the game within the game. Game within the game. Bat Boys versus Bat Boys. We, we saw Wareham's Bat Boy win a race to the a ball that got to the backstop just a minute ago. O2, swing and a miss from Stewart. He goes down swinging for the first out of the six. Fourth strikeout of the outing for Obermuller so far. He's been good. He's been keeping the ball away. Has only allowed that one walk issued at the top of this inning. That one's lined over to Snow. Flip to Lori in time. It's a one, two, double play. They get it. Snow to Lori to Lane. 
a work out of it. It's an unconventional one, two, three inning. Harbor Hawks picking up the bats when we come back. I've always sounded like Dr. J in my head, which means... We all have obstacles, challenges at different points in life. I still push myself every single day, and the harder I push myself, the, the more I find myself drawn to wearing UFOs. The first time I put on a pair of UFOs, it was like someone released the pressure. It was so crazy. When you are recovered and can do more, that has a compounding effect on all aspects of your life. Stepping into a pair of UFOs, they're truly one of a kind. There's nothing like them. Best ever? Good question. Wait, why do you sound like Dr. J in your head? I've always sounded like Dr. J in my head, which means Dr. J's outside voice sounds like my inside voice? Which coat? The doc would know. He got the world to call him doctor without going to med school. There's only one best ever. <laughs> As welcome you back to McKeon Park. Fox still rolling in here. As it will force pitching change here for the Gateman. As now coming in will be James Hep as you spotted out of the bullpen, Mickey. Out of UCLA, he'll get his first appearance of the summer tonight. Standing at six foot seven. Out of UCLA, a 3-3-7 ERA and three appearances this year. Small sample size this year, but looking like a really strong candidate to come to the Cape and really develop his arsenal. And he was a highly touted recruit out of high school, number 14 ranked right-handed pitcher in California. Yeah, that's the beauty of Cape Cod League. Maybe you didn't get enough playing time yeah. in the spring and with your college team. That's why college coaches will be like, hey, we're gonna send you up to some summer league. He's fortunate enough to be able to be placed here on Cape Cod, the best so far across the country, and then be able to develop against the best of the best. Yeah, and then especially if you come from one of those smaller schools, maybe a JUCO, you get to test your skills against the best of the best. Smith settles in. That one's popped a, a mile. It's going to be a test with the into fog. the air. Nobody Blaine sees it. Blaine can't find it. Hernandez has to come out down the line to make the grab. Great communication by Splain saying he couldn't find it to have Hernandez, who was tracking it the entire way, to make the grab. You don't see catchers normally make those plays, but yeah, Hernandez had no other choice because Splain just couldn't see it. And you said it as it was falling, Mick, that that's going to be a tough play to make. So you, you almost kind of want those pop-ups because maybe it'll cause a little bit of chaos. And without that communication from Splain and Hernandez, that ball drops. Mike Sirota watches a pitch off the plate. Struck out his past two plate appearances. One oh now pushes to two and oh on Sirota. Comes in four for twelve with a three thirty three batting average. Now 3-0. And despite that st a great average, his last hit was in the game, the last game at Spillane Park against Wareham. So he's gone through a little bit of a cold stretch. So time for him to turn it back on here. What better way to turn it on against the team that you had it all going for? Right. 3-0, misses wide. Sirota reaches base. And that's a way to get yourself out of a bit of a slump. Just in any way you can now, you see... You see it from first base and you think, oh, that's a view that I like and that's a view that I'm used to. So that motivates you in your next few at-bats to see the ball and put the bat on it. 
Yeah, and Sirota is a guy that's been here before. 18 games with Hyannis last summer, a 339 average, two home runs, 18 runs batted in. A guy that knows how to deal with a slump, a guy that knows how to get out of one, and there you see him drawing the walk. That's almost always a perfect way to do that. And we talk about, again, experience. I say this almost every broadcast, but to be having a guy come in in his first year and maybe not get the get the learning curve from the metal to the wood right away, it could put him in a bit of a mental in a mental s spray there. But Sirota being here before, perhaps going through a slump, he knows how to deal with it, and he knows that only time will help pass it. And because of his such his hot start, he's confident that he can get back to what he was before. And he sets the table for the dangerous Billy Amick. Yeah. Amick swings and misses there. Guys, wh what do you think he was trying to do there? <laughs> I think that one was easy. He was... He is a power guy, or has two home runs, both of them coming in one game. I think he was trying to make a ball disappear into the fog. That's what I was thinking. Apple check back to get Sirota back in safely. And part of these lineup switches made by Coach Eric Lexis is making Sirota know that you have Amick right behind you, so getting on base is so much more important with a guy like Amick up in the box. Popped up foul. Now 0-2 here to Billy Amick. Try playing golf in this kind of fog. Whew. Where I'm losing the baseball as soon as it goes off the bat. Try a golf ball. I was going to say, our golf balls as our broadcast team goes golfing on the regular. I don't know if any of us would. We can't find them <laughs> regularly. I would, mind I, you, without adverse conditions <laughs> as he checks back again. If I'm a golf ball and I ended up in my bag, I, I would be fearing for my <laughs> life. Yeah, you're not coming back home in that golf I bag. Was, I was going to end the day at the bottom of a lake. <laughs> All one to Amick pushes him off the plate. Now two and one. One and two, excuse me. Right side of the infield is open. With Spillane holding Sirota on the bag over there. And that's good for Amick because now the attention isn't fully on him, so it's more likely that a, that a mistake happens, and Amick is known to punish mistakes. Happens continuously than checking over Sirota. Well, one, two, plate word. Amick bouncing it off and by Gonzalez. Sirota's got the moves on. He'll come in sliding. The third ball gets away. There to back it up is Hap. And moving now to second will be Billy Amick. Two in scoring position with only one away. A big base hit from Billy Amick down the left field line. And that extend from Sirota, though risky, it oozes confidence. I've said that phrase already today, but confidence coming out on all forms. And that's really risky from Sirota to be able to get in there, but he does. And he knows how big that is because that gets Amick to second, takes the double play out of order, and now puts the go-ahead run in scoring position. To bring up Lane, grounded into a double play in the first, struck out in the fourth. He can just get it into the sky with Sirota's speed, you can sacrifice tag if he can get it there. Slow chopper back up to Hep. Lane will run down to first, not gonna be in time for the 1-3 put out. Now two away. Now they'll bring up Will Taylor. And the biggest moments you've seen Taylor coming into his biggest hitting. And now that's big. The, the unproductive out is big because now you have to get a base hit to get that runner home or hope that one gets to the backstop. Sirota with good speed, though, over at third. Taylor looks at a strike. Now, even though that pitch dunks in, that's a good take from Taylor. You just want to see one kind of work the at-bat a little bit. Oh, one to come home. Almost hitting Taylor now one and one. This is the closest Harbor Hawks have been since back in the second when they had Donay at third. Just their second time they've been able to get a runner over to the third base. 
Chopper foul, one and two now. Fog continuing to roll in here in Hyannis. Taylor had that big hit back against Katuit and that big comeback. We'll see if he can get another one here. Hep able to grab it out of the air off the bounce. Underhand fields to Splain in time. He works out of the jam. It's another 1-3 put out. We go. And now we go to Bria Lasik. You just saw Will Taylor up to bat, but you can also see him on the football field. That's right, the Clemson Tiger not only plays in the outfield for the Clemson baseball team, but also as a wide receiver, right, wide receiver for Dabo Sweeney. Not only that, his grandpa, Ed, also played both baseball and football in college, so definitely runs in the family. Will is the first Clemson Tiger to play both sports since 2013, so definitely very athletic, very speedy, and I asked him quite frankly, how do you do it? You go from football season to college baseball season to now summer ball every single day, and uh, he just said, he loves it. He acts like he's just a little kid going from sport to sport after school, and that's always been his mindset. So you can tell that he just loves it, loves it being out there, and he says he doesn't really have a preference of what sport he's playing, mainly the one that's in season. All right, back to you guys. Your future begins at Dean College. Make a difference. Leave your mark. Break the mold. Be a leader. Achieve unimagined heights. Believe in yourself. Make lifelong friends. This, this is, is your time. time. Your place. Your, your home. Your Dean. It all starts here at Dean College. The nightmare himself, Michael Rodriguez, comes in. In relief. As... Rodriguez sporting two decisions in his favor so far on the Cape Cod Baseball League season through two games. Has only pitched three and a third, striking out five, only walking two. Still hasn't let up a hit through those two games, but his college was even better. Yeah, we take a look at those stats, the walk plus hits per inning pitch, just below one. And I mean, look at that strikeout to walk ratio, 67 to eight. That's partially where that nickname, The Nightmare, came from because in that fall of 2022, he struck, he struck out, didn't just get out, he struck out 34 of 47 batters that he faced. So yeah, definitely don't want to be waking up to this guy on the end of a bad night of sleep. And the last time we saw him, we saw him picking up the win against Katuit in that wild comeback. He pitched the 10th with that ghost runner at second and worked out of it scoreless, a really key inning this season for the Harbor Hawks. He went an inning. No hits, no runs, a walk, and a strikeout in just a great effort. Yeah, he was able to put the Harbor Hawks in a position yeah. in the bottom of the 10th to get there and ultimately able to score the one run needed. Still with Fog over McKeon Park. Temperatures starting to come down a little bit, but still hanging around 70 degrees with humidity in the air. That one's fouled off by Yadi Hernandez, the catcher. Cade Obermuller's night is done, and he did a fantastic job. Two and two-thirds innings, no hits, no runs, a walk, and four strikeouts. Oh, one just below the knees. Again, the bullpen continuously yeah. coming in. And when the Harbor Hawks have needed them, have been able to blank teams. And that's the real strength of this team. Obermuller came in, inherited a runner at first, and was able to work out of that. Great job by him. And if you think about even going back to Bates, there's one pitch he probably wants back, and that's yeah. the two-run shot for McLean. And the rest of it has been a stellar pitching performance for the Harbor Hawks. And we're saying this nearly every day. It's that this bullpen just coming through more and more often, keeping this game at a one-run game. And now, now Rodriguez has 
the has the next chance to do the same thing. And we talked earlier about about Juco guys. This is his chance to yeah. be able to show and flex his muscles against the best in the country. And I think he's going to be flexing them pretty strong. Two two. Rodriguez picks up right where he left off with a strikeout. Nicely done by Rodriguez. Getting ahead in the count. You know, wasting some pitches, setting him up, and then comes right back with a nice breaking ball and gets the K. As Dorian Gonzalez now settles in. As a pinch hitter will come in, Sebastian Morello. For the Gateman. He'll look at a strike. Morello comes in from the University of Georgia, batting 250 with five RBIs. Breaking ball at 92 miles an hour. Now 0-2. Rodriguez. O2, wind into the glove of Snow, spinning around in time to beat him down. Snow hitting the spin cycle over at shortstop to be there in time. Yeah, and that is a sharply hit ball that he fields on a hop, does a great job of keeping his footing, in, and that's all footwork right there. That's something that you practice, going to your left, gloving that on your glove side, and then it's so hard to throw across your body, so the spin maneuver allows you to slow down your momentum slightly, set your feet, and fire that one to first. Caulfield forced to get a little bit of a dance in the box. He's backed off with a pitch low. Weather looks like shades of the Katuid game the other day now. It looks like that slight little light rain. Pitch in four strike. That fog continuing to develop. You can barely see out into center field. One one. In for another strike. Michael Rodriguez. I mean, yeah. Putting another stellar adding. Yeah, Together. sitting 92-93 right now with a little bit of movement, too. I mean, this is really nightmarish stuff. The one-two delivery. Breaking ball upstairs. Hyannis fans not, not happy with that one. No, they are not. The 2-2 delivery to come home. That one's going to be pulled into left field, giving Chase will be Lipsy. He'll bounce down in front of him. It's a single for Caulfield to turn over. It's back to the top of the lineup for the Gateman. Josh Stevenson's lone hit of the day came back in the first. The rest of them have been strikeouts in the third and the fifth. Now with the runner... At first, Stevenson trying to increase their lead. That one inside. Now 0 and 1. Pitch in for strike. He's ahead in the count, 0 and 2.
Rodriguez. Ahead in the count. Breaking ball, got him looking. The nightmare strikes again. We go to the middle of the seventh. It's stretch time here at McKeon Park. Diet Coke, are you my mom? You should be so lucky, because you know what moms do? Well, I suppose we should start with the whole giving you life thing. It seems like that should be enough. No? Okay. What about her ability to send shockwaves through the neighborhood without saying a word? Or whip up a ridiculous handmade costume that you forgot to tell her about? Not to make you happy, but because she had a reputation to uphold. She invented Rideshare, called it Carpool, and did it for free. She didn't need those dating apps either. You copied her jeans, her spin, her shoes, her scrunchie, and whether you realize it or not, her music. Why not? Oh, and she can win any argument in four words. Because I said so. Everything you're trying to do, she's already done. Did it better, and she did it with a Diet Coke in her hand. So, drink what your mama gave you. Let's take a look around the rest of the league in the Cape Cod Baseball League. Orleans and YD going 5-4 in 10 innings. That's a big win for Orleans after getting rained out against the Harbor Hawks yesterday. 6-0 Brewster over Chatham, another statement win. And another statement win, how about those born Braves? 13-1 over Katuit. And while we're live here, we've got one more live game. It is Harwich and Falmouth. Harwich leading that 5 nothing. Mike Maynard in. Yeah. The writing crew down there, they're getting into it down there. They bring the energy here to McKeon Park. If you're ever on Cape Cod in the Hyannis area, bring your energy to McKeon Park. Free nonprofit game able to help the Hyannis Athletic Association, all free of charge. Always love good fans in the stands, even our junior Harbor Hawk fans in town got tonight. A got a bunch of future Harbor Hawks in attendance tonight. Yeah, Harbor. My grandparents are in attendance tonight on this Sunday night, understanding nothing like a good Cape Cod baseball game in the evening. Morello will come in to stay at shortstop for the Gateman as Donay comes in. Donay with this healthy hack. We've been talking about it, and, and Donay has been taking much better at bats recently. He seems to figuring be figuring this league out a little bit. And that's just the beauty of what time can provide for a couple batters. With you get a couple more abs, you get more live at bats under your belt with the wooden bat. It will start to come to you. As Donay's able to rip that one into the left center field gap. That one will bounce off the wall. Stewart's able to look for it. Donay comes in standing to second. It's a leadoff double for Brody Donay. You think he's found it? Yeah, maybe just a little bit. He's been hitting the ball hard all over the place right now. That big single in the first, or in the second, excuse me, he scorched that one. And now a, a double. And now you're saying that this is this is all mindset with Brody Donay too. Giving it the time, and now he's really hitting the cover off the ball. And now this is a big moment here with the with the leadoff runner on. And sometimes you need a player like Donay who can provide a spark in the ball and really hit it hard to do it by himself just a little bit to get the spark going through this team. Bunt shown by Lipsy against Yoel Tejeda from the University of Florida. Made that pitching change. He was drafted by the Pittsburgh Pirates in the 19th round in last year's MLB draft. Tejeda fields and fires over is Caulfield and fires in time, but Donay on the move. He's over to third. Those are the kinds of outs you want to be making. It's if it's a ground ball to the opposite side, that's a productive out because now Snow can elevate the ball 
and he's got Doné 90 feet away. So getting that ball into the outfield will most, will most likely tie this game if it's deep enough. Tejada here trying to work with a runner on third, 90 feet away. That one will get away from Hernandez, but keeping it in front of him, Doné with the happy feet dances back. That was a huge block by Hernandez. That pitch was off the plate, way down and away. A really tough short hop that he just took off his chest. A nice job. Infield's going to play in to try and stop the run from scoring here. And that's big because anything hit hard will probably find its way to the outfield. Pitch inside, keeping it in front of him again is Snow. Out of deals, that one will be lined into the glove of Splain. He is able to eat it up off the dirty bounce. Doné shows no move. And that is exactly why coaches tell every player, no matter the level, get your feet in front of the ball. Get your hips in front of the ball and be able to knock that ball down. That He brought that ball all the way into his chest and did a great job fundamental play right there. Laurie settles into the box for a strike. Now this is the second time this game where Laurie comes up with a tying run 90 feet away. Couldn't get it, couldn't get the job done last time. What can he do here? Laurie looks at a strike. Now 0-2. Infield now is able to play back with two away. Yeah, that's a big call right there. The 0-2, that one sent into the night sky. Stevenson can't find it, it's gonna drop down. Scoring will be Doné and standing is Lori. Stevenson lost it in the fog, we thought it was gonna play a factor, it does. Stevenson with his arms out. And now at this moment, umpires are gonna now conference. Wow to see if this game should continue. And if you're Wareham, you're, you're thinking, wow, this is now when you conference. It's, you know, the fog has been rolling in for a couple of minutes now, and it only takes a, an error in the outfield, not an error by definition, but an outfielder not able to find the ball to think, okay, now let's, let's conference together and discuss the state of this game. As you can just see the fog right here, it, it is critical throughout the ballpark right now, and he had no idea where it was at any point. Finally found it when it dropped onto the ground. Still the umpire and crew of Robert McHugh, Anthony Letizio, and Jeffrey Merzel conferencing right there to try and have a conversation. They're gonna call the coaching staff over here about the current play. Yeah, if you can't track fly balls, it's it's just tough. It's tough to continue the game. There's so many of them at this level, and it becomes a little bit dangerous out there. And it, it gets to a point where it's unfortunate for Wareham that this is how yeah. this game needed to be. This is the moment that, th that had the umpires come and co converse about this, but there re really weren't many fly balls up until this point, and it's just upsetting for them that it comes with the tying run right close and that the tying run does end up scoring. And for Hyannis, they have the go-ahead run at second right now with Cam Smith up to the plate, who homered earlier in the game. This so if you're Hyannis, you probably want this game to keep going. Yeah, still a lengthy conversation. They have not broken up between Skipper Smythe and Lexus. Just away from home plate. I have to imagine both teams are in very different situations, but Fogs continuing to roll in here at McKeon Park. And of course, we saw the game against Falmouth earlier in the season get called in the top of the sixth inning due to rain. Well, you're just trying to wait on word. Skipper Smythe having a lot to say right now in that conference.
as the five I, of them still discussing here what they want to uh, have happen. I wouldn't be happy if I were him either. I wouldn't That's be happy if I was either manager because e as we just detailed, each team has their own reason to be upset. One, that it took until just now. And two, because, because now the game is tied. As Wareham's gonna now start to pull in. As if you just heard that from our beautiful crowd mic placement right there, as Jeffrey Merzell, the third base umpire, coming in to give that call. They have deemed it a safety hazard right now to continue this game, so we have now entered into a fog delay. They're gonna just hold out hope, try and hope this fog passes. It's a 2-2 ball game here in Cape Cod. You can end in a tie in the standings, but right now, umpire and crew and both teams sent into the dugouts here. Thank you so much for joining us. Here alongside Michael Kirsting, Mickey Doolittle, I'm Jacob Irons, Bria Lossick down on field level four. But guys, really, you talk about it right now, it, in this situation, it came at a really awkward spot. Yeah, it just came from the pop-up out there that was lost by Stevenson. And unfortunately for Wareham, it tied the game. It came in a very important spot. And that's why every single hit here matters. Yeah. Because Donay doesn't do that. The sacrifice isn't made by Snow. And that can just end up as, an, as just any old little pop-up. Yeah, yeah, when you it, talk about it there. In the, in the two doubles in this inning it is huge. Yeah, as... We'll toss it to a quick break and be right back. You're watching the Hyannis Harbor Hawks on the Hyannis Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Gannon's Tavern is the home of incredible wings, handcrafted cocktails, ice cold beer, and kino. Their innovative tavern menu features seafood, great sandwiches, steaks grilled to perfection, and stunning specialty dishes. There's no better place to watch your favorite New England pro football team than Gannon's Tavern in their large bar or outside on their covered deck complete with TV and sound. Gannon's Tavern, 959 Bursa's Way, Hyannis. Like them on Facebook and Instagram. Yes, soon at Gannon's Tavern. With Hood Milk, you can trust your family is getting high-quality milk in every nutritious and delicious drop. It begins here on farms that Hood selects. With farmers who uphold the highest standards and who pledge to never use artificial growth hormones. And you'll see that care continue right to your home with our Light Block bottle, which protects the fresh taste of your milk. At Hood, we never stop caring about our milk because you never stop caring about your family. Always good, always Hood. So happy to have you with us here. We're in a fog delay currently, tied a 2-2 ball game between Wareham and Hyannis. But when you know if you've been following the broadcast all year long, when weather-related injuries come into play and issues, we have to call on our producer, Grant McNew, here to make this weather call guy that specializes in meteorology yes. for us here yeah so um we've talked about this before guys when it was in a storm warning yep uh, we talked about cycle warnings yeah we have watches. we've talked about other things right now you're looking at fog okay? fog, yep. fog is a little different because fog it's not very tangible all the time but yep. right here you look out and you go wow that's really foggy. <laughs> that is very hard to see through, especially the ball with a similar color. Yeah. Um, you heard from the umpires say safety hazard. Here's what the people in the crowd are saying right now. I was down there as they yeah. were calling it. Hey, this is Cape Cod, baby. This is what we do. The umpires didn't like that response, though, <laughs> and um, I discussed this a little bit with some of the fans. If we can throw the uh, standings graphic back up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Nico, the producer, please. Yeah, look at him. Um, He's already calling shots on air, yes. too. So look let's at this. Get, um, while we wait on this. Yeah, there it oh, is. So perfect. looking in the west, this is what I pointed out to somebody down there. You've got Hyannis and Wareham. It's 6-6-1 six, six and one and 6-6. Six and six. This is a big game yeah. in the standings. We touched upon it in the open between yes. the three of us about whoever wins this game could potentially come out as the right. sole winner of this second-place race. Yeah, and we know Katuit really – had some trouble tonight as yeah. well. They're going to drop down to nine and five, it seems. Um, but yeah, six, six and one, six and six, uh, facing it against each other here, and you're tied at two with what seemed to be a big momentum swing for Hyannis. Then the fog comes in after they realize, hey, no outfielders can see yeah. the ball, yeah. which yeah. 
in the game of baseball, I don't know if you two know this, seeing the ball is pretty important. Yeah. I think it is. I think, I think, so think it too. is. Yes. I think so, too. I mean, you see, so I played some baseball back in the day. Of I don't course know how you much did. you know about that. Hey, if you listen back to the broadcast yeah. on the 20th when these two teams last squared off, Grant yes. McNew, Josh Schreiber, and Nico Sharp were able to take over the mic, and you may have heard about that experience a little bit. Yeah, at least one of them. <laughs> at least one of the experiences. But this, oh, my gosh, the bad boys are racing. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's that's on Stay me. On task, that's man. my bad, fellas. Stay on task, Anyways, man. so, yeah, the fog. Dark, cloudy. So some people think clouds are like marshmallows, that they're yeah. really soft. These, no, they're not. They are not. Trust me, you can't see. It's dangerous. It's kind of wet. And we've yeah. seen it all night on the center field camera, actually. Yeah. Right? How dark and it how really gray has. it is. You know what else really bothers cameras? Rain. Haven't mm. seen it today. No, we Haven't have not. Haven't seen it. However, me and Josh Schreiber, we did bag out our center field cam to make sure it is weather protected yes. here. Because we talked about it. Good job, by the way. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I yep. didn't even, we didn't have to redo it either. I know. That was a one-take wonder over there. Phone call between me and Nico yes. Sharp went swimmingly earlier today. But we'll take a quick break right here on nice the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network as we're still waiting to find out how long this weather delay is. We're in a hold tight situation. Hold with us right here on the Harbor Talks Baseball Network. That ship on the shoulder, that started at a very, very young age. People's expectations are, they're cool, they're fun, but mine are bigger. You know, when you play in New York, they want to see winners. It doesn't matter if it's a Monday or a Friday or a Saturday, you got to come with it or those fans will let you know. Pick one thing from me, pick one other thing from another player, make it your own, you turn to who you want to be. What motivates me is the unknown. You know, how good can I be? You get away from the lights, you get away from the camera. Man, how can you not keep it fun, man? This is a kid's game. If you could go back and tell 10-year-old Francisco one thing, what would it be? You a bad mother. Welcome you back here to McKeon Park. We have entered a fog delay. We'll toss up a graphic real quick, and as soon as we hear of any word, we'll come back here, right here on the YouTube channel. But for right now, you can step away. Maybe go get a snack. Maybe we'll start streaming your favorite Netflix show. But stay locked on our YouTube as we will provide an update as soon as it becomes available.
Welcome you back here at McKeon Park. That is our live look from our yeah. center field camera. Grant, I don't know about you, but I don't think we're playing today. Yeah, and this is kind of something that we talked about while I was down there on a serious note. You know, we're in Cape Cod. You see the fog moving in. More often than not, the longer you wait, the worse it's going to yeah. get. And you look at that. That's our center field camera. That is no longer our center field camera. No. That is our camera. That is our but camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, fog, you can't really play through this, as you saw. Yeah, no. Visibility is down. We can't see center field from here in the booth. No. And we don't have fog in our eyes like nope. the cameras do or yeah. like the players would. So this, yeah, and there's the pan of it. And it's almost a green haze with it, as you see there, with the lights and the grass and the reflections. But, yeah, you can't play through this. I'm sorry. No, you can't. It's, it's, a tough, it's a tough call to make. As we welcome you back inside the booth, Grant McNew, our resident meteorologist, Nico Sharp, Abby Stokes, Austin Nakuda, all chilling out with you here today yeah. as we're in our we should fog get delay. Austin on a mic. Yeah, Austin, former broadcaster, here, Austin, two years. Come on. One, yeah. yeah, we've got fog come delay on. shenanigans up so, here in the broadcast booth currently. Here, yes. Well, as Austin Nakuda, you hold on, you'll have to scoot by us. Hold on. Come on. As we maybe can oh, turn off. <laughs> Look at this. The Look poor, at this. poor guy's got to go through all our wires here. here. Hold on, work. hold on. You're bringing me with you. Bringing me with you. There we go. All Rain right. Rain delay. Rain delay. Well, <laughs> fog delay. Fog, fog delay. delay. Yeah. I was gonna say. How are you, man? Good. How are you guys? I am. I don't just hear you. Dandy. No. I don't hear him at all. I don't either. Hmm. That's okay. It, How about now? Somewhat a little bit, okay. but. As. Well, yeah. We got. I mean, obviously, we're not playing baseball now, or probably anytime soon. Ever. I don't know. I mean, you see those banners out there? You can't even see them from here. Yeah, and you worked hard on those. I did. I did. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, as we there figured, he yeah, there we, he is. Yeah, we oh, figured out me. what headset you were in, oh, but good. we did that real quick. Austin Takuda, Grant Manu, Jacob Irons, hanging with us here for this grant, this uh, fog delay here. So we see it a lot at Chatham, but how you are here for now, this is your third summer here yeah. with Hyannis. How often wow. do you see this here? at Hyannis with this fog condition? We had it once my first summer, okay. uh, and they did a, like an hour and 10 minute delay and then said, Ooh. oh boy, hey, this isn't getting better, so we're just gonna cancel it. Yeah. So that happened, and then it happened at Chatham a couple times, but it usually passes there, they're right off the water. Yeah. I don't know, Grant, you're the meteorologist guy, yes. so you could probably tell me why that happens there, and this hasn't moved. Um, but then I heard a rumor that what they used to do is they'd take the umpires and have a player from each team go out and they'd hit them a pop-up. And if they both <laughs> caught it, they'd keep playing. Wow. And if, wow. If they that, it, that's that's old school Cape true, Cod if possible. But just hanging around the parks, one of like the people that has been around the league that long yeah. told me that. So okay. I don't know if it's true. Was but he, yeah, he might have been lying. He could have been. <laughs> but yeah. I, don't, I mean, once the center fielder dropped the ball, that's when they decided to pull us back on this one. So Now, is yeah. it too early to say maybe the umpire said, hold up, hold up. Hyannis just scored. <laughs> I think it was just a coincidence that okay. the first ball dropped was also when Hyannis scored. Okay. So. Yeah, I think it is. 2-2 ball game. We're tied here between Wareham and Hyannis in a pivotal West Division matchup. Hey, while we have a moment here with Austin, you know, you were a broadcaster last year. Maybe you can walk us through some of your experiences broadcasting, maybe your favorite yeah. memories or yeah, something. Yeah, what are your favorite memories? <laughs> Uh, it was a good summer last summer. Yeah. Uh, it was good getting the Hawks into the playoffs, you know, being a part of that. They uh, The first summer they only won eight games. So it was nice to, uh, Finally, see, to see that happen. Yeah, reap the benefit. As well as we were going to touch upon it a little later in the broadcast tonight. Uh, Abby Stokes, our director of broadcast and media relations, who has taken a job with the lovely Baylor University. Well, okay. She is taking – okay. Grant, Baylor. She is taking <laughs> – a job with Baylor Vision as a producer. This is our last game here on Cape Cod before the playoffs, but you work there closely with your, our co-bosses. What is Abby's uh, effect right now meant to you so far well, in <laughs> having, having her together? Well, I mean, this broadcast wouldn't be possible, obviously. Yeah. Abby's the one who helped get the center field camera up and running last yep. summer, and you know the multiple cameras, the graphics. Uh, Drake Tolan, her built all of those. Um, he's somewhere in Alaska, maybe Anchorage. I, yes. I heard he was traveling the world last time. Yeah, I, I was walking told. it. Right. So yeah, thanks to those two, you, this broadcast you see today is made possible. Yeah, really. We can well Nasdaq. Yes, on Nasdaq, the video board. Nasdaq was big running the video board last year. Yes. Yeah, and the banners. As can't <laughs> think. <laughs> So we can't thank oh. Abby Stokes enough here. 
as we'll take a quick break and <laughs> be right back here on the Hannah's Harbor Hawk Baseball Network. Thanks for joining us here for a little oh, well, uh, thanks for having fo me. fog delay shenanigans here. All right, great. Thanks for having me. We'll be right back. Our fo Hold on, give me, can I give you one second and I can get us right into your next door? Sure. Awesome. This is Elijah Schrager. He's joining us here as we continue on our fog delay shenanigans. Elijah, I hear you have a really good baseball story that you want to tell everybody at home. Yeah. And so, so I, I'm on first and the kid hits, hits it and then he goes to first and I go to second and this guy on the other team, he, he's at second, and he's holding the ball from the last game. Okay. And, and then, and the kid hits the outfield, so when I go to second, the kid the kid tags me out with the wrong ball. Wrong ball, no way. A little bit of the, he tried to do the switch switcheroo he, on you? Yeah. Ooh. Were you able to stay at, stay at your yeah. base? Oh, ah, yeah. smart heads up base running for you, huh? Yeah. What position do you play? No, I don't do normally do stupid positions. I'm in the J JCL, that's why we Okay, JCL. Do all your, move it around every night? Yeah. Nice. What do you think about the game so far? Uh, it's good. Good game, tied ball game between Wareham and Hyannis. It probably shut down the game. Yeah, you think so? I think we are too. I don't know if we're gonna play today, huh? It's a little bit of heavy fog. Yeah, all right. We'll see Elijah as we'll take a quick break and be right back right here on the Hyannis Harbor Hawks Baseball Network.
Hey, welcome you back. Umpire is now going to meet with both head coaches as they have entered back onto the field. Thank you so much for staying with us through this fog delay of an unnecessary knowing at the current moment. So we're going to wait them as both coaches are at home plate. They're going to make a call between Smythe and Eric Lexis, the staff in general, as they're having a conversation. Once again, fog has not necessarily at this moment let up from where we have seen it previously. Still currently, it is a very foggy night here in Hyannis. As we wait to listen and get official word from the umpires. And that is our center field camera right there. That is what it looks like. It is just impossible to play baseball right now. Now both both coaches not necessarily wanting to have this conversation. We're after the seventh, so this game can stand on its own 2-2. In Cape Cod baseball, there are allowed ties if you just push to that extra inning. So instead of going to the extra inning to get a tie, you would get a tie here in the seventh. They know how to work the metrics for it. Now it's the question of, once again, it's still very unsafe right now. So we're trying to track down some answers right now, and I've heard two different answers. It's this game stands as it is, so a 2-2 tie, or it reverts back to the last completed inning. And if that's the case, it's a 2-1 loss for Hyannis. I don't know how that would necessarily make sense, but that is certainly on the table right now, and I'm asking as many questions as I can and, and trying to find answers, but right now it's kind of unclear what, what the ruling is going to be. Yeah, is still waiting to hear word here currently, but from our official crew at the moment. Thanks so much for staying with us here as Smythe and Lexis still currently trying to work through it at the moment as they still have a conversation. Bria Lasik. Bria Lasik in <laughs> at the booth here currently. Great to be on. Any uh, any word of what you're hearing as you are the dugout patroller? Um, I'm hearing that there's a lot of fog on the field. Okay. And uh, it's hard to play baseball. Mm. So that's what they're currently debating. Uh, no word what the final decision will be. Honestly, both coaches kind of animated saying their points right now. So. Not As still with the umpiring crew, Jeffrey Merzel, the crew chief here tonight for this United Umpires, <laughs> our United Umpires, umpiring crew. Nico Sharp now joining us in the booth. Nico, you're a former player, played D2 ball. It's a little bit of a tough condition to try and suit up and play today. Yeah, it's a tough look for everyone. You know, I mean, you can't really see the ball, you know, as a hitter. I mean, or, or if the ball does get put into play, the fielders have no chance, so. I mean, I'm not sure how much better it's going to get in the time being, so I'm not sure what I'm, I'm interested to see what they're talking about down there. Thank you so much. Real Osik, Nico Sharp, Jacob Iron, so happy to have you with us here as we're still in a fog delay currently. 2 2 ball game is tied and still waiting to find word between our umpire and crew as they're still down there having a lengthy conference because understanding how important this game is in the West Division standings. Yeah, I mean, you said it, you know, with it, with two teams being at 6-6, six and six, it, it's kind of a, a tough thing for both teams. They're both wanting a win, especially an, an interdivision win right here would be huge for both teams. So I'm, I'm, I'm really interested to see, you know, this is a, a pretty elongated conversation. And like, like you said, Bri, I mean, it's pretty animated for, for both sides. So I'm, I'm interested to see what, what the coaches are saying here. As we talked about it with Mickey Doolittle, we're hearing word from a couple people downstairs is that they want to essentially resort to the last completed inning due to policy. But once again, it's still a little unclear. It's a little bit of a gray area as far as we've understood it up here in the broadcast booth about whether it will be as it stands right now or whether it will resort back. You can see that fog beautifully against the Wareham dugout. And then in center field just really speaks to the gravity of the situation at hand. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a little foggy whether or not what the call will be, but um you know, last year I remember there was a lot of games having to do with sunlight when, you know, certain parks that we would play at didn't yeah. have lights. And so, you know, you're fighting against this 
the sunset and everything, and uh, they would revert back to the top of the inning score. So, I mean, those were the rules last year. I have I to imagine they would stay the same. Yeah, I believe they're the same. But Wareham's coach is definitely the one that's doing most of the talking in this huddle right now, so I can imagine he's definitely arguing for that. He's trying to argue for his call, and once again, the play was decided on a 2-2 on a double in that situation in a big spot at that moment. So it dropped down there, but it's one of those tough situations. Umpiring still conferencing currently as really a tough conversation with Eric Lexis, but I think we're going to be able to bring in the man himself, Nick Johnson, the general manager of the Harbor Hawks, thanks so much for joining us on this fog delay fun we're having up here yeah. in the broadcast booth. I tell everyone who comes, uh, you know, when they ask me what to pack, I say weather. <laughs> you know, like cold weather gear, you know. It's, this is Cape, man. It doesn't happen very often in Hyannis, but we're trying to figure out the rule here. We think because we had a chance to rebuttal at the bottom of the inning, we were able to tie it that the worst outcome here is the game ends in a tie. Okay. So that is, I think, what we're discussing. And you can see the, the the Wareham manager a little upset probably because he thought the game maybe should have been called a little bit earlier. But I've, I've checked with multiple people, and I think that is the rule. So it won't – I believe it won't revert. In worst-case scenario, we walk out of here with a tie. Is that where you would expect this situation to go at the current moment, not to be made up because the tie is allowed so far in the Cape Cod Baseball League standings? Yeah, I, I don't see this game being made up. If, if that is the ruling, I think it would just be a tie. An unfortunate one, I think the team was playing really well. I think we had momentum in this game, and truthfully, I think we should be up three or four runs. Uh, but, yeah, you know, that would have been an out. So you walk out of here with a tie, uh, that's a win in my book. Yeah. However, let's take you back as we're still waiting on this decision to maybe one of the most – impressive nights you'll see in summer college baseball in the Katuit win a six run bottom of the ninth you're here at every game can you take us through your emotions in that situation for a team that you were able to create and get here on Cape Cod to really deliver in that moment I mean I until we did it I didn't think we'd do it I mean each each person that came up it got a little bit more interesting but you know being a lifelong baseball fan uh, you know or a sports fan of any team you're like, oh, that'd be really cool if that happens but Inevitably, it'll fall short. I mean, yeah. Six runs in the ninth inning against the caliber of arms they have over at Katuit. Um, But, man, that was one for the ages. Uh, the league statistician, I'm sure you guys have talked about it, said the, the largest comeback in, since point streak has reported. Yeah. And uh, in my tenure, we were down once eight to nothing at Falmouth. We came back and won that game, but it wasn't in one inning. So right up there, I mean, with the rivalry and everything, definitely – the one best. of the top. Well, yo, the, the top. Um, yeah, just, I mean, cash swinging 3-0. Didn't see that coming at all, but it was a great call. It was exhilarating. I, 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 I've watched the highlights too many times. <laughs> watched him back and through. As we're still waiting to hear word here as what the decision will be made. Still a lengthy conversation, chatting with – Nick Johnson, the general manager, you talk about the baseball ops team and how vital they are to your operation to be able to get the guys here and be able to find the guys that you want to pick out to really develop a winning culture here in Hyannis. Yeah, I mean, it's a very nuanced uh, process, right? It's not like the minor leagues. It's not even like college, the way you recruit. Yep. You have to contend with who's going to make Team USA, which kids are going to get shut down by innings. Uh, Kids can't throw back-to-back -back nights, uh, and you build your team a year in advance. So, uh, you know, kids that haven't seen many innings, you're going to have to pull a tr you know pull the trigger on because uh, they've had a really good summer, but they haven't really played in the ACC or SEC or whatever conference yeah. yet. So it's, it's, it's a ton of research, a little bit of a leap of faith with the relationships you make with head coaches, but it's a, always a cool moment when you, you know, watch and – for nine months and build this team and then you see them for the first time that's really cool um and as the summer progresses obviously you all bond and you learn their personalities yeah. and uh their draft stock rises and you go through either slumps with them and whatnot but um that is a really fun part of this is you know 
we probably spend too much time following these kids, but it is cool when they finally get up here and, and perform and, and you get to know them on a personal level. As Skipper Smythe for the Wareham Gatemen and Eric Lexis have vacated the conference at home plate with the umpires headlined by Jeffrey Merzell, the crew chief, as they're now going to have a conference themselves in that situation about how they want to maybe play this one out the rest of the way, especially in these conditions, you'd have to imagine it's not playable as the fog still continues to roll in from Hyannis. We talk about it, the water's just right over center field and the outfield fence. So really one of those situations where it's just continuing to roll in uh, as the umpire and crew continues to make the calls. Still chatting with Nick Johnson here. Nick, we talk about the analytics becoming such a larger part of the baseball game. And here at Hyannis, that's what makes Hyannis a little bit different than some of these other teams. Yeah, I mean, everyone has their own analytics department. I think what we've done differently is uh, expanded it to the, the role route. You know, about 14 people on this team uh, working in different departments within our baseball ops departments. We have people that are focusing on biomechanics. We have people focusing more on scouting, people focusing on just, you know, video. Uh, and then, you know, I, I think – we have the, the biggest thing is creating a vision of what you want for your team and then going out and finding the th you know amongst the thousands yeah. of other kids you know in division one d2 naia juco we don't discriminate if you play good baseball we're going to come and find you so um i think that's kind of the difference yeah. between us is that is that the expansiveness of our research i mean it's you know it looks like we might have just bagged this one as we'll hear from Jeffrey Mazel, it's going to be a called ball game. It's going to remain tied at a 2-2 count like you talked about it. 2-2 tie here. Thank you so much for Nick Johnson, the GM, for chatting yeah, with for us. Thanks for having me, guys. Real sick <laughs> up here as well. For everybody here in the Hyannis Harbor Hawks organization, for Michael Kirsting, Mickey Doolittle, Grant McNew, Josh Schreiber, Nico Sharp, Abby Stokes, Austin Dakota, I'm Jacob Iron saying so long. It's a 2-2 tie after a fog delay. Thank you so much for joining us. If you live here, fun is your thing. If you live here, tough is your thing. Smart is your thing. Caring is your thing. If you live in Massachusetts, community is your thing. Since 1972, the Massachusetts State Lottery has provided over $25 billion to help cities and towns with the things they need most. If you live here, giving is your thing. My family earns respect. My family clears bases. My family breaks records. My family wins MVPs. My family gives everything. My family makes history. My family wins championships. There's no family. There's no family. There's no family. There's no family like my family. Join the fam. Join the fam. Join the fam. When Alaska Airlines needed a partner for the complex operations of travel, they made the switch to T-Mobile. Our 5G has Alaska Airlines and their customers covered from major hubs to remote destinations with 5G coverage ready now for the demands of today and the future. T-Mobile's network powers Alaska Airlines as they deliver next level care for all customers. 5G ready now. That's how unconventional thinking is better for business. Coke Zero is now Coke Zero Sugar, with great Coke taste. Some people were excited to hear the news, some were skeptical. So we're not going to have the star of the show you're watching come out and say, you'll love it. No special jingle written by this week's hottest pop star. No famous internet celebs who happen to be holding the label just so. Okay, maybe just one little poor shot. The only thing that will make you believe Coke Zero Sugar has great Coke taste is trying it yourself. Ice cold Coke Zero Sugar. Try one today.